you think you're the first one to do this? Get out. I'm like, you're kicking a five-year-old out of Publix? He's like, yep, get out of here. So, <laughs> whew, five years old. <laughs> that is classic. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. On the uh, lower left little, uh, you, you're not on a little box anymore, Dolan. You're at home. So what are you on? You're on the on the keyboard. I'm on the I'm on the Zoom settings. How about there that? You go. Not sponsored by Zoom. Not mm. sponsored by Zoom. But if they would like to sponsor us, we'll take it. Why not? <laughs> Why not? There's been lots of happy hours on Zoom where beers are consumed. Oh yeah. Maybe. This is insert uh, insert John here. Maybe John needs to reach out to Zoom. <laughs> that up. Idea. I, don't I don't want any money. I just I just want the uh, I just I, I just want them to say, you know, they're a sponsor or whatever. Well, great. they could send us some swag or something. I'd, oh sure. You know, that Zoom pen of yours has been your favorite. Yep. Exactly. Zoom pen. This is my favorite pen. <laughs> Sponsored by Zoom pens. There we go. Okay. Uh, mainstream May. We did it last year. We're going to do it again this year. Uh, we are going to start with the largest craft brewery in the country, Yingling. Uh, shouldn't be able to get it here. We've got it. And well, two of the three of us have it, right? No yeah. one would have had it. I would have had it, but I don't. I don't have those hookups like like you guys do. Yeah. Because what is it's east of the Mississippi. You are east of the Mississippi. You can get the Yingling. If you are west, you've got to rely on your friends to bring it to you. Uh, America's yeah, oldest brewery. They are the oldest craft brewery. They're con- they're considered craft because they're independently owned still. Mm-hmm. Uh, at a beer fest I went to with uh, Aaron Daly once, I won a uh, wood grain hat because that was the answer to the question. What's the oldest United States craft brewery? And I got it right. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, located in Pottsville, Pennsylvania, they, uh, Yingling is the, it, no, Brian, help me with this, angelicized, angelicized version of Yingling J U N G L I N G. Uh, so, anglicized English language translation. Anglicized. There we go. So they just accepted it. They came over. Uh, German brewer David Gutlieb Jungling. Jungling. Yes. Immigrated to the United States in 1828 uh, from Aldingen near Stuttgart. Stuttgart, that's fun Stuttgart. to say. Stuttgart, yeah, yeah, right? Uh, in the kingdom of Württemberg. Kingdoms, wow, we're going old school. That's old school, man. That's, yeah. uh, it was 1800s, yeah, 1828. So, yeah, he, he changed his name and he started Eagle Brewery on Center Street in Pottsville in 1829. So they started off as Eagle Brewing, right? Mm-hmm. To sell the... Uh, eagle on the on the label there yep Uh, since 1829 it says right on there yeah uh that brewery burned down in 1831 uh then they uh relocated to manhattan tongo street at fifth street which is its current location i just destroyed that name yeah i thought maybe you cut out Mm, no (laughs) (laughs) nope man M A H A N T O N G O. Okay. Manhattango. Yeah. That's uh, still where it's at now. Yeah, still where it's at now. And they changed their name at that point to DG Yingling and Son because his uh, 
in 19, 1873 after Frederick Yingling joined his father to run the company. And that, that name is still on the, on, well, on my can. Uh, yeah. DG on the bottom Yingling left side there. Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Yep. The bottom of the bottle. Yeah. yeah. I know this was fun. Uh, so you wonder, okay, so 1829, right? What did they do during Prohibition? Because they couldn't make beer. Well, yeah, what did they do? Which I'm sure they probably made some regular beer. Uh, yeah, really. As we've learned through other research that Brian has done over the uh, over the podcast here, he uh, they survived by producing near beers. Yeah, point five percent alcohol content, and they called it the Yingling Special, the Yingling Portor, mm. and the Yingling Javo J U V O. Hmm. Uvo. I wonder what that was. Hmm. I don't know. Didn't really say. Uh, they also produced ice cream and they opened dance halls in New York and Philadelphia to make money. Weird. Dance I guess they got to do what they got to do, right? I mean, they, yeah. Um, it worked out. Uh, in 1933, when the breweries, when uh, Prohibition was repealed, uh, they made a special beer called the Winner Beer. Winner, W I N N E R, Winner Beer. Uh, and shipped a truckload of it to the White House to show their appreciation to President Roosevelt. Oh, I, that was interesting that they're like, hey, grease the wheels a little bit. Thank you. Good work. You know, I, w I think we do that sometimes, don't we? Send some beers out? Get maybe. Done. Done. maybe. Yeah. yeah, maybe. It works. Uh, in 1999, this is interesting, they uh, increased their capacity. They, they had outgrown their capacity. Uh, in 1999, they purchased the Stroh Brewing Company plant in Tampa, Florida, and now operate out of both Tampa and uh, and Pottsville. Didn't we just have a Stroh's plant here, Omaha? I thought so. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I thought I thought we did. Uh, you can still buy. You, you could you can buy Ling, Yingling ice cream again. Oh. In, in February of 2014, I've never seen it, but I think I would probably I would probably get it if you. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, the son, the cousin of David Yingling, who is the the new president CEO, uh, Dick Yingling, a direct descendant of David Got Gottlob Yingling, the original dude. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a separate legal entity that runs outside of the brewery. That is ice cream. Yeah, for ice okay. cream. Run by Dick Yingling. Um, I loved it that at one point, and I won't get into the the details here that they kicked uh labor unions out completely oh. and it made a lot of people mad yeah that happens it, it was uh not awesome uh then just last year i wish i would have known about this because we i would have uh, maybe if they do it again this year we need mm -hmm. to try to get some uh october 2019 they partnered with hershey's to make their very first collab ever it was a Hershey's chocolate porter. Yeah. I heard about that on the internet, but I never got to try it or see it. I would love that. They make a really good black and tan beer. Yep. That's one of my father-in-law's favorites. Um, so he brings those back whenever he goes and visits my sister-in-law. That's how I have my stash of yinglings here just from him. So. Uh, I got some information for us before we get into it. First of all, let's talk about the taste. Mm -hmm. Colin, how does yours taste? Mm. Oh, uh, well. well, actually, I've, I've had it before. Sure. Um, I've had it in North Carolina. And the way that I would describe it is just a regular lager. Um, I think it's overrated. But uh, Ooh. Ooh. it was it was good on a hot day. How about that? I agree. Uh, you agree that they're overrated? Here's the thing. I, I don't... agree it's good on a hot day. It's too sweet for me. Really? Okay. Yeah. It reminds me of, um, it, I don't know. It's like the sweetness you get after a Bud Light. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what it reminds me of. Hmm. Yeah, I would... I would choose a maybe just a straight Budweiser over this one. Um, but I would, I mean, I'd drink this. I like to have it. It's kind of fun to show off for your friends when they come over. Uh, somebody wants a regular beer. At least I have that in a, in a fun way. 
And it's probably a location thing because when I was in North Carolina and that was readily available, Mm -hmm. that was what I bought. But, you know, if I had the choice, if I lived there and had the choice, I, I probably would buy something else. I'd probably still buy this if it was here. Like if we could get this, I would probably still buy it just because it's independent and, you know, I don't really need to give Budweiser any money. True, true. I would, yeah, like the beer fridge in the garage, right? If someone, like friends come over or your neighbor stops by or whatever, hey, grab beer out of the fridge. Like I would prefer it to be this over that's, uh, Main Street. That's where I have this kept is in my garage beer fridge. <laughs> there you go, see? But that's it. That's, I think that's the difference. I don't, I yeah. think maybe overrated is, is, maybe overrated is unfair it, well, we get yeah, it's a lot of hype here in the Midwest right. because we can't get it, so it's kind of legendary as right. this uh, name recognition that maybe if you're into beer, you've heard of it, but you you haven't tasted it. Mm-hmm. And when it comes down to it, it's a lager that the recipe really hasn't changed in like almost 200 years. And and keep in mind that's my exact perspective when I say overrated because you know I heard about this this mysterious Yingling for almost a year before I finally was able to try it and. Um, I was expecting it, you know, to knock my socks off. Sure. You know, it's just a regular old lager. It's pretty cool. I think that it's being so old. I mean, you're talking about generations of people's family been drinking. This is their beer. You know, we don't really have that yet. I mean, we're coming close on like 30 years for some breweries, but for almost 200 years, you're, you know, Mm -hmm. great, 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 great grandpa. This is all he drank. You know what I mean? So that's that's the unique thing that is very European for most of the beers we've talked about uh, being super old. This is the closest we get in the United States. Here's here's a bit of, uh, and I can't prove this, it's, it's Wikipedia, so take it for what it's worth. Okay. Uh, Wikipedia says, due to the popularity of Yingling traditional lager, which is what we're drinking, uh, in Pennsylvania and the Delaware Valley, including South Jersey, in some bars it can be ordered by simply asking for a lager. Yeah, if they've been open that long, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So they just give That's me a lager. Funny. They give you a yingling. So I did um, a little bit of research on portion of the brewery stuff. I kind of thought it would be something that you wouldn't touch on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll get into that real quick and then we'll kind of branch off from there. But um, like you said earlier, it was the Eagle Brewery was originally what it was called. Yeah. Um, currently, they are connected to the American Eagle Foundation. So uh, they give money to this foundation to like basically maintain and keep up uh, eagle populations in the United States. Uh, They've pretty much embraced that eagle logo and have held it all these, all these years. It's always been there. Mm -hmm. Um, Just recently before this all got locked down and stuff, they had an event at the brewery where they had an actual bald eagle there and you could go in and like, take pictures with it and um, basically meet it. Um, Then they had some updated cans, but they had an eagle, like a bald eagle on the can, a little bit more prominent. Um, They did a thing where they did um, eaglet releasing. So hand raised eagle chicks that were hatched. They did like a release that was sponsored by Yingling. Um, They had a webcam thing for a while, like in some nests, they were sponsoring so you could watch the eagles in the nest and stuff. So they really like attached themselves to the eagle, which is kind of cool. I know there's one here. I think it's an eagle's nest in like Shenandoah, Iowa. I've seen on recently on the news and stuff that they've been showing. So something that's still, I don't know, at least in the United States Midwest, it's, you know, they're, they're pretty cool to see. Um, they did their first updated packaging in 30 years to make the eagle a little bit bigger. So they hadn't really changed anything on the, on the logos or the labels or package of, of any sort until most recently. So there you go, Rich has got a good shot of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, in, let's see, what did I say here? Oh, June of 1782, uh, we're talking old, old school. So this is before the brewery. Uh, this is when the eagle was chosen as a symbol of the United States. And they put it on coins, gold and silver. Uh, it's on a half dollar and it's on a quarter. Um, oh, that was, that was interesting. Uh, one of the things I put in my notes was 
there was a lot of people that agreed with that. And then there were some people that didn't like the Eagle being chosen. Um, ben Franklin was anti-Eagle. He did not like the Eagle. He did not want it to be the symbol of America. Uh, one of his reasons was that they can be basically chased out by tiny little birds. Hmm. So kind of similar to a hawk. If you've ever seen here in Nebraska, you're out driving and there's a hawk and there's like five little blackbirds chasing it around, keeping it away from their nest. That similar is an eagle. So just one little bird can push an eagle out of where it wants to be. And Ben Franklin was like, that's not what I want to represent. I, you know, we want the iron fist, not some bird that'll just fly away because a sparrow came, came close. Um, so they were, they had like a committee. They hired a committee of people to be like, okay, what's our national symbol going to be? And it took three of them to come up with the eagle. And basically what they think was, was a Pennsylvania lawyer back in that 1782. His name was William Barton. And he's the one that submitted um, this kind of idea. Uh, as far as more eagle information, I have some of that for us too. Um, in the late 1800s, so we're talking the brewery's been around for 60 years or so, there was 100,000 nesting pairs of bald eagles, uh, which is a lot. Uh, in 1940, so we're talking what, another 40 years later, 60 years almost later, um, they create the Bald Eagle Protection Act, where it's illegal to process, kill, or sell anything eagle-related um, because they were basically being hunted to death. Um, sometimes even used it for like their feathers used for hats in the 20s. There was a big hat craze and they were using those kind of things. Uh, in the 1960s, the stuff called DDT was added into a lot of fertilizers and pesticides. And that would just basically would make the shells of the birds so thin that they couldn't really um, make it all the way to the end of the time that they needed. And so a lot of eagles were not even bearing kids anymore. There was and, also a uh, devastating finishing move in uh, WWF wrestling back in the day too. Right. I think that's probably where it comes from. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, 1978, the Eagles added to the endangered species list. So it's like super protected. Uh, the environment where it lives was super protected. You can't really get close to it. Um, and then 1995, it kind of moves up just to the endangered list. And then 2007, it was totally off the list. Uh, I know in Nebraska, I saw recently there was like 120 or 140 mated pairs that had nests that they had counted. They do an eagle count every year. Um, and a lot of those are along the Platte River. So uh, if you're driving from Omaha to Lincoln, maybe you're on a brewery run, uh, trying to sneak down to boiler or zip line or something, uh, pay attention when you get over the bridge on the river because there's usually a couple of nests in that spot. So um, I have been seen around. I have seen them from my house. Um, I have seen, and I live out that way kind of. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen them from Steve Ryan's house before. We've been sitting yeah. in his driveway and maybe consuming beers. I don't know, Lee Yingling, maybe. Maybe Yingling, I don't know. Uh, and have seen them fly overhead. They, you can definitely tell it's, it, it is a bald eagle. Yeah. For sure. They're pretty, they're pretty cool, and uh, I've even seen them in my neighborhood, which is pretty sweet. Um, yep. So if, if you pay attention, you might, you might get to see one here in Nebraska. Uh, I found this interesting, the meaning of bald. Uh, they call it a bald eagle. Um, basically, used to mean if you were bald, like in the 1780s or 1800s, that meant your hair was white. So not that you have a spot on your head or no hair. If you had white hair, that meant you were bald. And the eagle, as we know, like Rich has a lot of white hairs there. This, this um, is because of Dolan, by the way. <laughs> I got a lot of white in this part from my kid, I think. Actually, it's my children. Yeah, it's my children. That's more so than Dolan. That's so if you, yeah, if you have white hairs on your head, you're either a bald eagle or a parent. Um, females in the species are bigger than males. Um, they can swim, which I've seen videos of that, and that's really weird. Mm. Usually what happens when you'll see one swimming is they caught a fish that was in the water, but it was too big to actually lift it out of the water. So you'll, that's usually why they're swimming because they've got a, like a big fish in their, in their talons. And then nests. They had one when I was a kid at the Lincoln Zoo. They had like a, one that they had created basically so you could get the scope and the size of one and how big the nests really are. 
Because when you're driving, especially in the wintertime, if you see one in a tree, you're, you can actually see it from the road. Uh, so that means it's pretty big. And they're averaging four to five feet wide and two to four feet deep. That's an average size nest. The record size one, this is crazy, 20 feet deep, nine and a half feet wide. That was in St. Petersburg, Florida. That's huge. That's like bigger than an apartment in New York City. Like a bird condo. Yeah. Or like a fire, fire station. It's got a pole in it and everything. Mm. Very cool. Two bathrooms, a basement. Oh, very nice. Office room. Wi-Fi that works probably, Dolan. Probably, Dolan. Um, they can live for 50 years old, which is pretty old for a bird. And they're only in North America. They're nowhere else, which is kind of why one of the reasons it's really good for our country. So that's, that's what I got for um, eagle information. The other thing that I think was cool, and this is something that um, maybe we'll learn a little bit about, is they are mated for life. Uh, so once they connect, that's it. And there aren't a whole lot of animals out there that do that. And I did write down a list of some of these because uh, some of the names are fun to say. Mm. So let's get started. Albatross, that's another bird. That's like a mm -hmm. seafaring bird. Um, beavers, mate and pair for life. Gibbons, that's a monkey, a little small monkey. Um, Sandhill cranes do. Barn owls do. Pigeons do. This one's obvious. Lovebirds, they do. <laughs> California condors, they do. Uh, angelfish, macaws. Seahorses, I thought that was interesting. Uh, coyotes, barn owls, puffins. Those are like those little uh, penguin-looking birds. Um, here's, here's a good one. A dick dick. That's an antelope variety. Uh, All right. We're gray awesome. wolves and black vultures. And also the titty monkey, T-I-T-I, titty monkey. <laughs> Pair yeah. for hey, life. Aren't, aren't, oh, you got more? No, that's it. Aren't uh, emperor penguins, aren't they? I don't know penguins. if they made for life. They weren't on my list. They, there's penguin divorces, and so they... they oh, yeah. gotcha. They're messy. You don't want to... It's, it's a bad, bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> Try to stay out of the middle of that, yeah. You know, it's interesting. You, so you, you, you mentioned uh, uh, the, what, the bird. What was the bird? Uh, there's lots of birds, obviously. Yeah. Um, Albatross. No, 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 no. Not the pigeon. The... Uh, uh, Puffin? The puffin, the lovebird, yeah. The it was was dove on there with with the doves on there. Doves are not on there. Mm. Uh, geese are though. Canada huh. geese. Geese. So there are now. Brian posted a meme. If you're not following Brian on Facebook, his meme game is it's like strong. no other. It is yeah. a strong, strong game. Uh, Brian posted a, a meme just recently about um, people that shouldn't be just shouldn't have birds that have birds like watch birds out their window. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, they're my birds, right? I have right. birds. <laughs> I do. I have yeah. birds. I feed them. I have to go to the store and get bird food for my birds. I ordered some yesterday, man. It happens. There is, there's a pair of, there's, there's a duo of doves. Uh, Jenny has named them Helen and Stanley. <laughs> oh, you've got names for your birds. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have multiple woodies, the woodpeckers. I can't tell the difference between, so they're all woody. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, Helen and Stanley, they, they're, they're the same two doves that just hang out together and, mm. and who knows, maybe they're buddies. Maybe it's two dudes. Yeah. I don't know. I, but in our heads that they're, they're Helen and Stanley, they're married and that's cool. Yeah. It's been something This yeah, I spent a lot of time. I have my setup down here in the basement. Uh, and it's right next to the big window in our house. And that's where my bird feeders are in the backyard. And yeah, I spent a lot of time just checking it out. So those are hitting home for me pretty good. Do you have, do you have grackles? Tons, tons of grackles. Hate those things. Trash birds. Yes. The junk. My son calls them bad nuts. I don't know why, but he does. He's right. He is so right. Yeah. Those birds are mean. And yep. look, I don't like cardinals very much, right? Especially Obviously. the Obviously. Duh. Yeah. But I've got some beautiful cardinals that live around in my yard and then come mm -hmm. feeder and the grackles chase them away. Yeah. That makes me mad. We had a thing when my son was home with me all the time and I was working from home and teaching him from home and all that stuff. We would pick one or two things a day and learn about it. And that was one of the things we learned about one time was grackles. Mm. So one of the things about grackles is they will knock food out of a bird feeder because they don't like to eat out of it. They like to eat on the ground. So it looks like they're just trashing it. They're just dumping the seed everywhere, but really that's just so they can eat. So trash birds. changes your opinion or not. Um, my other little area of expertise learning for us today 
was the year of this brewery because I think it's important. It's we can't say this enough. It's the oldest one in America, the oldest craft brewery. This is 30 years ish before the Civil War, so it's old. Uh, so I I did a little research on what else was happening in the world at that time. Um, 1829. So we're gonna get into that real quick. Andrew Jackson sworn in as the president. Robert Peel was his name. He established the Metro Police Service in London. So the Bobbies, that's when they were first created, 1829 in London. Uh, the first patent for a typewriter was issued. So that helped, you know, books and authors and all that sort of stuff. Um, the Western Third of Australia was founded. So it had been, I don't know, just hanging out there, I guess, was not the penal colony. Uh, side. This is like where Perth is and Fremantle. Mm. Um, if you've ever did, been to there or looked at did, it. Did Christopher Columbus just like discover that too? Like, oh, look at my, the backyard of Australia. I think, yes, I think he did for this. And can you tell I got some venom for Christopher Columbus? A little bit. I noticed that. It's come up a few times. So that's 400 years later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have beef with Christopher Columbus. We got old beef. <laughs> Super old. <laughs> Um, there was a gold rush in the United States in 1829. And you know where it was? Georgia. Hmm. What? Georgia. Yeah, in the mountains of Georgia, there was a gold rush. Hmm. Um, what else? Oh, the first bus service ever happened. It was in London in 1829. Hmm. I assume that was some sort of horse-drawn contraption that fit more than a couple people. Uh, but yeah, 1829, first bus service, like hmm. public transportation, 1829. And then these people were born. Uh, Levi Strauss of the Levi Strauss Jean Company, wow. uh, Geronimo, famous Native American, and then Catherine Booth. She started the Salvation Army in England in 1829. So everything was popping in England in 1829. We were just kind of getting the training wheels on, but we needed to have beer, and luckily, Yingling was founded at the same time. I would put that right up there with Salvation Army and, uh, you know. Very important. Right. Helping, right. helping people. Yeah. And beer. Beer in, beer in general helps people eventually. It either helps solve or um, ignore problems, I feel like. I, 100%. Yeah. Mm. So what do you think about Yingling, Rich? What's your, what's your feeling on the flavor? You know, here's the thing. I, maybe out of the three of us, I like it the most. I like some sweetness too. I like the sweetness here. Now, generally, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't look for it. Yeah, but I like it. Uh, um, it. It's it's always there in my fridge. Anytime someone is coming from east of the Mississippi, I will always ask if they would, you know, if they would meal some back for me, and sure. I, would, I would gladly pay that just to have, just to have it because I personally enjoy it. I I'm, I enjoy it more than like other traditional Bush Light, Bud Light, you know, Budweiser, those types of things. I, I enjoy it more. I think it just has more flavor than some of those. Yeah. Um, with a, what's the ABV on this? Are we, are we still in the fours? I would guess it's probably f maybe five. I don't know if it says at least. 4.5. Yeah. 4.5. So it's one of those like, you know, what's, of course, lights a 4.2 and Bush, Bush lights a 4.4, 4.2, somewhere in there. So, I mean, it's just, I think it just, it just has more flavor. If I'm down in, when I go to Florida, we've, we've been known to, uh, go to the same, a beach resort place in Florida every every couple three four years. Um, I will I will only 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 order Yingling or Cigar City. Yeah. So Cigar City is another great uh, Florida brewery, which we can get here now in in uh, in Nebraska. Just, just came, yeah. Yeah, Florida um, Cracker is probably one of if you like if you like Blue Moon, Florida Cracker is something that you know it, it would be for you. Okay. Uh, Yingling's website was another one of the ones that I am blocked from with my work computer. So that's great. Uh, mm. So I wasn't able to really do a lot of this research, but I wonder, do they make like a Yingling light? Is there a light logger that they make? It's odd that you asked that because oh. it would be fun to, uh, once again, we don't talk about this ahead of time. No, we don't. Hmm. Go through the different products that they make. So okay. traditional lager, right? The one that we're drinking here. Uh, they also make a uh, light lager a low calorie version of, of the traditional lager. Okay. Which I've had, it's okay. 
All right. Um, in, in this case, I would, I would just probably Choose rather have. One. Yes, exactly. Um, they make a Pilsner called Premium, Yingling Premium, hmm. which I've never had. No. Um, the Black and Tan, which you referred to earlier. Yeah. There's a Dark Brewed Porter, which is a Baltic Porter. I Lord, this one sounds super fancy. I can't, I'd love to try it just because it's, it's, it's just like pinkies out. Lord Chesterfield Ale, named for Philip Stanhope, the fourth Earl of Chesterfield. It's the hoppiest yingling that they make. Huh. Um, I'd, I want to ask, I'd want to ask like Scott or one of our brewer yeah. friends about this. Um, uh, this is not a true ale as it's brewed with bottom fermenting type lager yeast. What does that mean? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'd have mm. to do some research on that. That's called bottom fermenting. Hmm. Lord Chesterfield. Uh, they make a golden pilsner, which I know, uh, like Michelob has a golden now. Yeah, they have for a while. Yeah. Mm. You can get that in Minnesota, the Michelob golden, but you can't get it here. Weird. Wow. Really? That's weird. Yeah. Um, I've had this one and I will vouch for it. It's probably one of my favorites. Oktoberfest from you. Yeah, that sounds it good. Is, oh boy. It is the, it is, it is the Marsden of Marsdens. It's, it's like Marsden squared. I mean, it's German founded and it's, you know, that old, it's gotta be a good recipe. I would think. Yeah. Mm. That makes me kind of crave one. It's kind of cloudy and cold out today. So it'd be right. perfect for Oktoberfest. So the last time we were in Florida was uh, over Thanksgiving last year. We thought, you know what, we're just getting, we're getting out of town. We're going this, this place. Lucky for us, you know, it was, you know, where we, where we are now. We, we would have done it otherwise, but um, we, we went to the same place down in Florida that we've always gone. We went to there. There's a Publix, the same Publix that uh, Maddox and I got kicked out of many, many years ago because we were posing. That's a whole different story. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. I can tell that story. I think it's funny. Oh, uh, Publix kicked me and a five-year, uh, six-year, no, nah, five-year-old Maddox out of a store there on South P, uh, on St. Pete Beach because uh, there was a cutout of, there was a standee of Jameis Winston. Uh, the oh, yeah. Player, right? Yeah. Uh, in his, in his Buccaneers gear. So he had, uh, he, during his college days, oh, no. he had lifted some uh, crab legs. Crab legs. Oh, and so no. I went and got some crab legs and I gave Maddox my phone and I stood by the Jameis Winston with the crab legs and he was taking pictures of me and, and the uh, meat manager or whoever was like, get out. You think you're the first one to do this? Get out. I'm like, you're kicking a five-year-old out of Publix. He's like, yep, get out of here. So, <laughs> whew, five years old. <laughs> that is classic. Awesome. Well, they're probably glad that uh, Winston's no longer. <laughs> there, like, yeah. Am I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. So, uh, but yeah, so we went to that same Publix and uh, they had the Yingling, Yingling Oktoberfest still. And it was, I mean, it was November. It was Thanksgiving time. So they still had it. Delicious. I drank a whole six pack in like two days. It was awesome. Do they have uh, a pumpkin beer, I wonder? Um, I, ooh, you know what? Maybe I'm almost through the list here. Let's okay. see. Flight by Yingling is interesting. It was just introduced this year. It's, they call it the next generation of light beer which is kind of fun, I guess, if, you know, from coming from them, who's been around forever, 2.6 grams of carbs, 95 calories, 4.2 ABV. So, so that's like, almost like a ultra. Yeah. It's a Mick ultra less, less than a hundred. That's pretty low. I'm going to tell you that I bet this has more flavor than a Mick ultra. Though. I bet, I bet it would. So interesting. Yingling Bach, uh, introduced in 2009, uh, summer wheat, which I would, I would, I would drink that. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, Yingling IPL. India Pale Lager. Yeah. You don't see a lot of those. No. Those uh, are great, by the way. Loaded with Bravo, Belma, Cascade, and Citra it's Hops. In, yeah. mm. Citra yeah. Hops. That's my jam. I. That's it. Like, I'd love that. I would love to do an IPL episode if we can get one. Like, the, hardly anybody makes them. No. Is, uh... Is uh, the hopped as Hellas? Is that would that be considered, or no? No, that's a German style lager. German yeah. style lager. Yeah. So, uh, old German, which is a slightly sweet lager sold in short brown bottles to resemble barrels. 
Uh, inexpensive retail price, $1.15 for a six pack in 86 is equal to $2.68 today, made for college students. <laughs> Poor people beer. I love it. Uh, Old German is still made by Iron City Brewing Company, it says, which is, I bet it's probably cost more than $2.68. Yeah. So, and then finally, uh, the half and half. So it's a 50% blend of dark brewed porter and Lord Chesterfield. Hmm, that hoppy one. Mm -hmm. So it was replaced by the black and tan in 86 and then was discontinued. So mm. now you get the black and tan instead. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I kind of like that they had different, not necessarily seasonals, but at least varieties. That's more mm -hmm. than Budweiser puts out, you know? I would, yeah, if you could get a, uh, a sampler pack from them that has a couple yeah. of wheats and whatever else in it, I think that'd be yeah. I would, Yeah, that'd be all right. Hmm. I thought this was interesting, too, and I, I circled this. Production output. Now, they only had a 2015, so it's, this is five years old. Okay. But you would think it would probably, you know, it would have increased or whatever. They produced 2.9 million barrels in 2015. That's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah. That's more than a lot. It's hard for us to really fathom it because we, we can't get it here. But I think at, anywhere you go on the East Coast, it's around. It's everywhere. I mean, I had some in D.C. Mm -hmm. last summer when I was there. So, yeah, it, it just must be like every baseball stadium and every, every bar, every place you go, it's got to be there. Well, there's a, an article I'm reading here that says that it's at the Heinz Stadium for Pittsburgh Steelers, but okay. it's $9 a draft. That's pretty cheap for a football game. Yeah. I think I spent like $15 for a bottle at uh, Bud Light at the Chiefs game this year. $9. Man. Them's the days. I'd pay that right now. That's true. Well, untapped. This might be the highest. Oh, it has to be the most. Yeah. Of all. All time, I think of, of us doing this is, but even more than like Bud Light. Well, okay, let's look real quick. So, three hundred and ninety-five thousand check-ins. That's a lot. So let's let's look at Bud Light real quick and see how many check-ins. Uh, Bud Light. Oh, just barely three hundred ninety-seven thousand. Oh dang! How about the latte? Let's look at Bush Light. Bush. That's not available everywhere, is it? Bush, Bush latte. latte? Oh, only 80,000 check-ins. Okay. Yeah. So what about, what about Budweiser then? Let's look up Budweiser. Uh, 383,000 check-ins. Yeah. Oh, second most. There we yeah, go. that's a lot. Uh, 395,000 check-ins. You have checked it in three times. I've checked it in one time. Mm. Where, where do you think? And we agree, by the way, which is interesting. Oh. What's the overall ranking? I'm going to guess it's higher than Bud Light, but that's still low. So I would say it's like 3.2. It's Your dog agrees. Yeah. I heard that. It is, it's higher than Budweiser and Bud Light by, it, by a long shot. Wow. Yeah. Let's, I'm, I'm well, low. Let me double check Budweiser real quick. I mean, I, Bud Light is a solid 2.29. So, <laughs> oh, Budweiser, 2.29. Five six. Yeah, you have checked in Budweiser three times. I'm embarrassed. That's it. I think I would check it in more. Oh no, I'm sorry. One of those is Aaron Daly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you've checked it in three times. Uh, all right, so 395,000 check-ins. Where do you think our average lands on this one? Dolan, what do you think? I think three point three. Oh, you out you out voted me by just a little bit, but that's okay. I, I just Bryce has righted me. Three point four eight. Dang. Wow. We've we've probably had craft beers wrote, rated lower than that on this episode. Right. And yeah. you okay, so you and I both agree. We've both checked them in at an average of three point five. Yeah. I think that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Yep. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I mean, I, I drank the whole can. It's all gone. I have to, I have to uh, drink it again because, like I said, I went in with high expectations. It's, here's the thing, Dolan, and I've, I've learned to temper my expectation on some things. Like, 
just because we can't get it doesn't mean that it's good. Yeah. yeah. I agree with that. Right. I mean, that's, there's, there's been a whole lot of beers that we can't get that I've tried. and like, Ugh. I'm glad. We don't <laughs> this. It depends on why you can't get it. Is it because uh, it's sold out or is it because it just doesn't get here? It's that's just, a difference right. thing too. Right. I See, would say it, it would be fun to try this like next to a Bud Light or a Budweiser and just taste it and see, mm. you know, what, what the differences are, what has more. I would guarantee you this one's got more flavor, but it's been a while since I've had a Budweiser too, but I don't know. That's just me. I think maybe a blind taste test going in cold, like not right now, but going in cold. I don't know if you would be able to tell the difference between this and a straight Budweiser. Mm. I think it'd be tough. It'd be a good video if we were all in the office together. We could walk around with, you know, like the Pepsi Coke challenge and be like, all right, which one do you prefer? Boom. Yingling. Yingling. It's yingling. If yeah. any of you uh, listeners have both of them in your fridge, why don't, yeah. uh, you know, you could send the video into us. Yeah. yeah. That'll work. I have Ying. I don't have Budweiser. I have Yingling, though. That's it. My, uh, my brother-in-law is a Budweiser fan, so I keep uh, at least six in my beer fridge in the garage for him, just in case he comes over. Just in case. See, you're a, you're a really good guy because you you try to take into account to your regular customers. I have the same. I've I have uh oh what's that beer? There's a there's a beer from Pint Nine. Uh it's like a coffee beer. Oh so cafe. Oh so cafe. I have, always have that at my house for my father in law. It's his mm-hmm. beer. So Yep. The uh Al Pastor, by the way, that you that you mm-hmm. gave me. Delicious. Right? Very Loved tasty. It. Loved it. Yeah. Haven't always been a pint nine fan, uh, but this one was they they home run that one man. It was good. Yeah, it was real real tasty. I enjoyed that one. OJ's Bronco, not so much. Yeah, but you know, just how it goes. It's nice to try something different, and that's why we're hitting this Yingling today. Yeah. Nobody bats a thousand ever. So if uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, if if we have any listeners that are east of the Mississippi that are coming this way at some point or whatever and could pick up something besides the uh, traditional lager. Uh, one of those other ones you mentioned? Yeah. Absolutely. I would be very, very happy to, uh, to pay you back, plus a muling fee for that. I'd like to hear from anybody that's out there what their thoughts on this is, because they can get it anywhere, right? If you're working out on the East Coast with us. What do you think of Yingling? If you go to a, if a, a tavern or pub or, or wherever – and uh, you have the choice between Yingling and, and the others. Do you, do you choose this one? Is that what you choose? Yeah, interesting. So, all right. So, I, Mainstream May started off okay. I I, I, uh, I got a little teaser for us for our next episode because of what you drank that out of. What did you notice? My my pizza oh, hut. You had a you had a, a bottle. Oh, my bottle. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. The it's a green bottle. Oh, the green bottle. Yeah. So we're we're gonna get into a little green bottle stuff uh, on the next episode. Mm, next week scares me a little bit. Next week we are going to talk about every frat boy's beer, the Heineken. Wow. Mm, maybe Dolan will have one this time. Mm, maybe. maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. So. Until next time, Brian, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have another macro beer. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing.